in this video, I would like to use and showcase the XBA API builder to make a SOAP service available as a REST API. And for that, um, I'm using the API builder in the API first approach. And the idea is to get the airports um, nearby to a certain location. And with that API first approach, I have designed a new API using Stoplight IO in my case, which contains an endpoint, which uh, takes in the longitude, the latitude and the range. And um, it should return all the airports which are nearby to that location. And in order to implement that API, I need to use an existing SOAP service running in the background, which takes in exactly the same parameters, and then it returns me the list of airports, obviously, in XML. Not, let's say, supposed um, or not part of really of that presentation is how this API is managed in API management. It's focusing on builder only. In order to start, I have already installed API Builder following that commands, and I have initialized a project which I have called Airports. And after I have started my API Builder locally, I have that Airports API Builder up and running, which contains a number of test APIs. And now I would like to include the API I have designed in Stoplight into my API Builder project, and I can take that from here. And the API I have designed is in here, longitude, latitude, radius. I take over that API into my API builder project. And in order to have a valid response right from the beginning, I say save and mock that API, which automatically creates a flow for me for that endpoint. And now I can go and edit that flow. So the next thing i need to do is to talk to the soap service and soap in my case what i'm going to do now is just to simulate the same thing that rest client that soap ui is doing for me it takes that payload and if i send that payload to the soap service this is the response and this is the same thing i would like to make happen in api builder of course at the end that xml payload should be converted into json I take that payload and copy it over into my API Builder project using Mustard, which is a template framework. And I say here, this should set the SOAP message. And the data is used by Mustard to add some dynamic parts into the payload I'm going to define. And I can limit that and say, I only would like to hand over all the parameters like longitude, latitude, and the range. And then I'm editing the template itself. So by that by that dollar params, this is now under behind data. And that's why I can say this one, this one, this one should be dynamic. And I would like to have here my longitude. I would like to have here my latitude. And I would like to have here my radius. Radius, I need to spell it correctly. OK, that looks good. And now I wire that up again. And when this is successful, I would like to have this to be placed in something into which I, which is my to be SOAP message as an example. So the next thing I have to talk to the SOAP service. I mean, the same thing like here, this is the endpoint I have to send the SOAP message to. And for that, I can use that connector, which is called REST, but I can also send the SOAP request because I just can here say this should be a post call. And let me that send soap request. Yeah, almost correct. Send soap request. And the body obviously should be our soap message. And the target URL should be that one. Additionally, for soap, I have to send the right pay or the right content type. And I'm super lazy. I take that from here because I know this is working and I can place it in here. And this should be the header and this should be the header name and the header value. Say it like that. And now that should work or that works. Um, let me try that out by saving that flow. And I have another one which I can use to easily fire that up 
and say I have a latitude, which is that one here maybe, and then I have a uh, longitude, this one here, and the radius about 30. Execute that flow. And here it might not be so super interesting. You see it works. I get the same response back as you have seen uh, in the SOAP UI response. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I would like to have is to convert that XML payload into JSON. At the moment, when looking here into the available flow nodes, there's nothing which can do that for me besides JavaScript and do it, doing it manually on my own. But API Builder is very flexible and you can add additional functionality to it. And there's already a flow node, which is called XML flow node. And I can install that into my API Builder project by firing up that commands, that command directly in my API Builder project. Let me stop it for a second. And now that flow node will be installed and start that API Builder project again and reload the flow. And now you see there is an, an additional flow node, which is called XML, which helps me to convert the SOAP response, which I'm defining here. This should be, this should go into the SOAP response. And I would like to convert it into, into JSON with that flow node, XML to JSON. And the data, again, which is, is the part of, of the context I would like to hand over. And when looking, again, firing that up to see how it has been placed. Um, this is the sub response with some status information, headers, and we have the body. And all this goes, we have changed that now into sub response. And I would like to convert all this into JSON, into, into a JavaScript object to be more precise. So that means I'm going to say I have a SOAP response and within that SOAP response, there's something which is called the body. <clears throat> What's wrong here? Why is it not accepted? Uh, I know why every time I select here something. Okay, this. Okay, now the SOAP response body is converted into a JavaScript object. There's also an option to automatically stringify it, but it makes no real sense. So that means now I have everything. Um, let's try it out to see what happens. Let's say this goes into JSON data, which is fine. And try that out, execute it. And now let's have a look into the console. And here is the result of XML to JSON. And now we have everything in JSON, SOAP envelope, SOAP header, SOAP body, et cetera, PP, which is not so super great because I don't want to return that SOAP information as part of the REST client. And for that, I'm just using um, an additional thing and say stringify that into a string because this is what I automatically would like to respond and um, get, get so body let's say it like that get so body and here i'm saying that should be stringified again i made the mistake to mark something here and the value is of course now this guy has returned json data and the json data should be should become the input of that parameter and inside that json data if you remember there is something uh let me scroll up json data which is called the SOAP envelope. So that means I make it a little bit more deep and say only give me that data. And inside the envelope, there is a body. And this is the part I would like to have as part of my JSON structure. And this ultimately goes into JSON. And this is what I would like to respond to my clients by saying, this is not an object, this is my JSON. Apply that thing. And now I'm more or less done with my API, which returns, obviously this could be optimized as well, but it re returns to me, let's say a valid JSON structure out of a SOAP service. Thanks for watching. I hope it was useful.